Once again, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity for giving this talk on behalf of the Data Sharing Working Group. Today, what I'm going to do is talk about, in sort of the outline of the talk, will be in four main areas. One, I'll talk about the context of data sharing. Two, the aims and scope of the work that the Glopadar Data Sharing Group has outlined. Then the action plan that we developed and the activities surrounding that action plan. And then I'd like to emphasize a couple of the pieces of work that we're taking forward. One being the public health emergency decision tool and the principles, as well as talking about the emphasis of our work over the next six to 12 months. So context. Why is everybody focusing on data sharing and global health emergencies? Why the need? I think that's the critical starting point when you talk about data sharing in any context, but particularly in global health emergencies, is actually defining the need of why you need to share data. And that's because we do need to respond to outbreaks in a coordinated and effective manner. And in order to do that, we need to share the underpinning data. If we don't do it and it's delayed or non-reporting, we have current instances where that's have happened in the past, i.e. the H1N1 vaccine trials, and that has delayed responses to outbreaks. Also, I think we should talk about data sharing, not just in a linear format, i.e. it's not just about doing the response, it's not just about the research, it's also about preparedness. So we need to use the data from current and past outbreaks to learn lessons and feed into future responses and outbreaks and understand how we can share data better and faster to improve both response and the research um, sector. So whilst the Glopadar Data Sharing Working Group is a conglomeration of 27 research funders, and our focus is on the research need, I think we do need to be mindful of the broader context. I'm also going to talk about the challenges and what we have outlined as the challenges and some of the things that we're planning to do as part of the action plan and our activities to help overcome these. I'd also like to make a point that the data sharing working group has focused particularly on data sharing. Whilst there is a lot of overlap with the principles and the way that you would interact and use data and samples, there are distinct differences and distinct considerations, which is why we have focused primarily on data sharing at this time. So the context, the mandate for change. I think a lot has happened in data sharing, particularly in public health emergencies over the last two years. And I think it's important to set that context in place. In September 2015, WHO had a meeting on this and developed global norms and really started to push the agenda forward. Following this, a group of research funders and other health-related organisations signed up to a declaration on the back of Zika in March 2016, also calling for data sharing to be shared as soon as possible within a public health emergency. And at the same time, in February, the ICMJE also published guidance saying that you should put your data out there as soon as possible and that that should not prejudice uh, publication going forward. So there's definitely been a change in the underlying environment. I think going forward, one of the challenges for the Glopadar Working Group and others acting in this environment is to see the force and implementation of those statements. And I'll talk about that when I think talk about our work over the next six to 12 months. Also, I think it's important to look at what's happening with WHO and the blueprint because any work that Glopadar does, I think does need to fit into the bigger context of what's going on. So I think the Glopadar work, importantly, will fit into WHO's global coordination mechanism as Welcome, for which I work, has been tasked with leading that. So we plan to bring the WHO work and Glopadar and other partners together very closely to ensure that any work that Glopadar is doing also feeds into the work that WHO and others are doing in this environment. Moving on to issues about implementation and the challenges to overcome. So these are challenges that at the very beginning the working group outlined broadly into three categories. I think it's important to note that I do not think that any of the challenges that I have outlined here are specific to data sharing and public health emergencies. I think what should be a good discussion point after this webinar and as part of the questions following it is what do people think, given Zika and Ebola, are the priorities in terms of these challenges? And 
are we missing some, given what's happened in Zika over the last six to 12 months? Because this list, I think we wrote or drew up about a year, a year and a half ago. So the first area is incentives and recognition, developing the mechanisms to promote data sharing, but not at the expense of competitive benefits of science. And I've deliberately put a question mark there because I've been given a talk about this and been pulled up on this a lot of times. People are questioning whether it's just critical in the scenario to get the data out there and we should be looking at other mechanisms for identifying the benefits of science in relation to publications around public health emergencies. There are also questions about accountability and those who misuse the data. And should we as funders be thinking about particular tools for censoring those people? The second broad um, category we have outlined is infrastructure and tools development. So ascertaining the repository and discoverability needs, and I'll talk about this in some of the work going forward. De developing the norms for these types of repositories and promoting best practice and developing tools to enable pre-publication data sharing. So things like preprints, which are starting to take place, and also some of the new emerging databases that are coming out for which you can get data published in a much faster manner. The third category is the ethical, legal and governance issues. Very broad, very big category. So some of the regulatory and governance hurdles to sharing. This is both within country, but also sharing across country, because we know different governments have different rules in terms of whether you can take some of the data out. There's also whether there is reciprocity in the data laws across Europe, across um, the US and across Africa and Asia. So looking at Latin America, looking at the kind of harmonization issues and how you can actually share data. Addressing issues of benefit sharing and reciprocity. So some of the work that's going on along looking at material transfer agreements and data transfer agreements. And if you are looking at in sharing individual level patient data, both within clinical trials and out with clinical trials. So how do you safeguard those participants and the communities when you're sharing this data? And underpinning all this is building trustworthy and confidence in the data sharing systems. And this is not just trustworthy by the participants or the communities. This is also between the researchers and the research community more broadly. So aims and scope of the Glopadar data sharing group. So as I said, the group has been in existence, I think, since March 2016. We deliberately came up with an aim to develop a system, and I've, that's singular for a for a purpose here, for data sharing and public health emergencies, which can support the scientific research response, including a com common framework, common tools, processes, and principles, which can be embedded in research practice. I think as back to my point about it being one system, I think it's very important that we are working together to develop one system and not multiple systems for this kind of data sharing. This also ties in with the Glopadar Charter, which includes a commitment to strive to make data accessible to each other and to the relevant research community as rapidly as possible and with minimal restrictions. What kind of data? I think that's very important to outline what we're actually talking about. And using the WHO data set that they um, outlined in their September 2015 statement, we have followed that and have put in the following list of data that we are concentrating on. Happy to discuss if there are things that people think we have missed out, but this is what we have concentrated on in the first instance. It's quite a wide and long list, as you'll see. I'm not going to go into it because everyone can see the um, list there. I think it's also important to put the different types of data in context and show how they're related to preparedness and response and how they're interconnected. So you cannot, even though you're talking about one particular data type, you cannot think of it just in terms of preparedness. You have to think of it in terms of the response and how it fits with other types of data and other types of activities. So this slide is to really illustrate that, the beginning of the complexity of the relationship between the data types and when you are responding and when you are preparing for an outbreak. Also, I think it's critically important to look at the different kinds of governance and systems. I said in when I was talking about the challenges, I said regulation, but regulation is only a small bit of a governance mechanism. So whilst you have regulation and legislation, you also have a whole lot of international conventions, 
um, you have soft laws, you have guidance, you have different types of guidance from different types of areas, whether it be biosecurity and biosafety, international health regulations, all those associated with doing different types of research, and including clinical trials. And if you're looking at genomics, you're looking at Bermuda prints. So it's a very complex landscape in which we are trying to deal with public health data sharing. And this is really to illustrate getting a grasp on the complexity of the landscape. And then finally, in terms of these slides to really illustrate the complexity is also, whilst the GLOPADA is a group of research funders, and that is our primary stakeholder, Really, when you are talking about a public health emergency and sharing data, you are sharing with numerous different stakeholders in this section, numerous different data producers from different elements of the research community. But you are also looking at government departments, you are looking at NGOs, you are looking at newly established organisations like CEPI, you are looking at all the different emergency response programmes coming out of WHO, like Go On, you are looking at other organisations like um, barter. So it's a very, very complex landscape in which we have mapped and we are working out how to work. So next, what did we do? As I said, one of the first things we did was develop an action plan. What is that action plan? So the aim, as I said originally, was to design a singular system for data sharing. And the key areas that we have looked at in this action plan are defined Adding the data we're talking about and what and when a public health emergency occurs, and I've already talked about the data. The second thing we looked at is mapping the environment, and I'd like to thank our colleagues at Isarac who actually led this work, and we're in the process of making sure that that is put up in a way in which the wider community can um, use that work. The emphasis also behind mapping the environment was to ensure that we were not duplicating efforts that were being done by other people, that it was complementary work, and also to make sure we're working with the right, right people that we need to be working. I have deliberately underlined the following two bullet points, the developed policy and a framework for data sharing and for public health emergencies, and the focus on implementation of data sharing policy and practice. And the reason I have done that is just to, I'd like to emphasise that over the next six to 12 months, one of the things that the working group has put at the top of its agenda is to actually look at the policies of the 27 funders involved in Globada and look where we can work to align our policies to make sure that where we can have clarity in terms of public health emergencies. So we're working towards seeing if we can get all the funders to have statements on data sharing and public health emergencies, working harder to look at how we define data sharing in as close to real time as we possibly can, and looking also, what are the terms and conditions we actually need to put in our awards to make this realistic and to make this possible? So that will be the group's number one focus over the next six to 12 months, to develop as much as we possibly can, harmonise policies across the funders, but also focus on implementation of those policies and make sure that they are as close across each funder as they possibly can to avoid confusion for our research community. And in adopting those policies, we will also work with the wider communities who aren't necessarily research funders to make sure that our policies are in line with current practice in NGOs, WHO circles, um, and what other people are doing. So that leads on to the next bit of the action point, which is really developing a roadmap for engagement. Because as I said, uh, there are a lot of wider stakeholders in, engaged in this than just the research funders. So we have already had a meeting with NGOs and a report will be available for that. And we are looking in to engage also with people further down the spectrum, those that might be producing experimental medical treatments or vaccines, so pharma company and biotech, um, that will be some of our next work over the next six months, 12 months. Examples of key projects. So as I mentioned, the mapping exercise, the group has also been working to developing principles for data sharing, led by my colleague, Wee Min Bung from um, Australia. That is currently out for consultation. We've had the first round of consultation and we've put it out for additional comments. They're due back by mid-August. Our commitment then is to revise the principles and we would like to discuss them at meetings throughout October and also in um, the GET meeting in Africa in um, August because we think 
think it's critically important if you're going to develop principles that you get buy-in from as wide community as possible. And I'll talk in a bit more detail about why we think developing principles is important. The decision tool, ascertaining the data you will need to share when and with whom, which is being led by Gail Carson that is IRAC with colleagues here at Welcome, and I'll talk a bit more about that. The other work that we're looking to do is work around case studies. So we want to develop both retrospective case studies to learn what data sharing did occur, occur in past academic in past epidemics, at what points, where it worked well and where it didn't. Current, we want to actually talk more to our Zika awardees and work out what's going on with the current grants, where it's working, where it's not, and then map some prospective potential outbreaks, looking to see if this information can feed into our decision tool and whether what we're developing is working. And then the final bit of main piece of work is commissioned work to develop the evidence base for the work that we are doing. So we are reviewing current and existing data platforms and systems to see what's out there, where there's a gap, where there's a need, and looking to develop standards for repositories, which is some work that we've co-commissioned with WHO TDR. And that really is to get some agreement on how we can get people to put their data in systems that everyone has got consensus on. I'm just going to quickly say something about the... Um, the principles. So here are the high level principles. These are building on the FAIR principles. We've added in more detail because we don't think that the FAIR principles covered the context in which we were operating to the level that we needed to do it when we're establishing a new system for data sharing. So at the top, and we think this is critical for data sharing in a public health emergency, is timely, should still be ethical, equitable, accessible, transparent, fair, and quality, of course, is a pinnacle issue. A bit more detail about both all of the principles. I'm not going to go into detail about them now. But I do want to make a, a really important point about why I think that principles are critically important for data sharing in public health emergencies. And I think one of the really tricky issues with data sharing in public health emergencies that is not common to normal data sharing and research is you might not have the time to develop relationships both with the people that you are sharing the data with, but also with potentially the communities from which the data has derived. So in these sorts of situations, it's critically important to be operating under relationships of trust. And they be, need to be built on mutual agreement. So they need to be built on systems that we can have agreement on, hence the development of the principles, and hence why we are going around the world and speaking to different communities and different groups to get high level and also broad buy-in to these principles. Because in order to sign up to something, you need to have confidence in the data sharing system. You need to consider it's fair and you need to support those underpinning principles, which is why it's critically important. I'd like to thank Gail for the next three slides. These were something she presented at the um, Globida General Assembly in Seoul. And I just really wanted to pick up on this piece of work because it's a big piece of work and I think um, we're aiming to have a pilot produced in the autumn and I think this could have a big impact on the way that data is shared in public health emergencies. So what is the public health emergency decision tool that the Data Sharing Working Group has produced? So why do we need it? Well, one, we need to help facilitate rapid data sharing. What does it, what is it? It is an online tool to identify what the key research questions are in public health emergencies and the data that need, the data needs for different stakeholders. The other thing that's important to note is that we will be looking at the key different types of public health emergencies in terms of what different questions do you need to ask at different points, depending on what type of outbreak you have. For example, if you have a yellow fever outbreak where you already have a vaccine, your starting point for the questions that you ask is fundamentally different for if you have a Zika outbreak or you have an Ebola outbreak for which you are trying to develop a vaccine. So trying to work out through a decision tool what are the questions you ask, by whom, who you need to share the data with in order to address those questions is the premise behind the decision tool. And initially, who does it serve? And there are four stakeholder groups that we are um, concentrating on in the first instance. But in order to gather the data um, to underpin these, quest these 
fundamental questions and the groups being asked by these particular people. We are actually interviewing multiple stakeholders, not just from the four groups, both uh, in terms of geography and expertise, a wide list of policy makers, clinical trialists, epidemiologists, modelers. So we're going and interviewing people widely to find out what are the key questions that need to be looked answered. And it is in it's an ontology. It will be computer readable, um, but obviously have a user a user friendly interface. And we are hoping to have uh, online prototype ready for trialing in the autumn. Um, and using Zika as an example, what we're doing here is having agreed core research questions related to any outbreak. For example, you might also have a subgroup within that outbreak. Zika, you would have a pregnancy subgroup. What are the core data variables to be collected during that outbreak? And for example, for pregnancy, what is the standardization that needs to be um, possibly agree upon outcome measures? This can be picked up and linked to pre-existent work, i.e. data collection tools. Um, and this is example of some of the types of research questions that you could pull out from a Zika outbreak and also some of the primary objectives of a standardized protocol. And that's all I've got time for, so I'm more than happy to take questions. And once again, I'd like to thank the Data Sharing Working Group because this is a collaborative endeavor.